Recap Cat is here with me, and we've got another recap of Celebrity Apprentice. This was the mother, father of all episodes. <laughs> Three hour tour. <gasps> Trump, that's even too much. All right, so last time, um, Aubrey was a little cryy because she lost, uh, and, the conti and it continued with a cry fest. And I'm thinking, will you dry those tears up already? It's not like they ran out of fried chicken. You still have that. So Clay gets to deliver his check to the National Inclusion Project, which is super cool. I freaking love the check deliveries. You know that by now. That's what the show is about. So this week, well, at the beginning of this week, they had to create a New York celebrity guidebook with their Toshiba tablets, which I'm sure are not as good as the iPads. Anyway, then they had to sell it for money. <laughs> Homer says he wishes he had an iPad. He can use mine, though. All right, so the PMs are Teresa and Dee Schneider. So for the ladies' team, Teresa's like, um, girls, we have to raise a lot of money. The book doesn't matter. All right, so Meat Mountain, a.k.a. Lisa Lampanelli, has a little freak out. She thinks she does all the work all the time. And, you know, she does have to do more work because she don't got it going on over here. She's got to make up for what she lacks in facial beauty and other places. So she's very jealous of the pretty people, and it's pretty obvious. Uh, Aubrey was selling herself in the books. How many people enjoyed that? Not me, because I don't want any of that. <laughs> she was all like, I'll give you a kiss if you buy the book. No, I'll run the other way. So the guys team also realized it's about raising money. And they had a really great idea. I love the aerial photos that they took from the top of Trump Tower. It was pretty genius. But, however, it was a little bit scary. When Penn was laying on the ledge, I was like, oh man, that is scary. I'm, I'm like thinking, please don't fall. I will throw up. <laughs> I, was thro I was getting nauseous just thinking about it. Penn also wrote some awesome copy for Paul Sr. It was like, I effing hate New York. It was great. Loved it. All right, so the men were calling in some major peeps for money. Jay Leno was called by Arsenio. He's like, yeah, I'll FedEx you a blank check. And Mario Andretti showed up, and he gave 20000 which was hella cool. Teller of Penn and uh, Teller showed up with 20000 Blue Man Group showed up with $8,000, although they only netted 2000 because they, like, exploded a balloon full of money, and some people walked off with it. It was ugh, weird. Anyway, I love Blue Man Group. The Jay Leno check didn't make it, so Arsenio ended up raising this much. Scary! Alright, so the guest judge was Regis Philbin. Holy cow, I didn't even know he was still alive. Is he? <laughs> I don't know. That might have been a cyborg, Regis Philbin. Alright, so it's time for the boardroom, and the ladies' team is going freaking nuts! Lisa Lampanelli's like, Aubrey and I do like 90% of the work, and maybe Debbie Gibson, like 1%. <laughs> it was crazy! Those two are insane! And then Teresa and Debbie went at it. It was a total meltdown. It was really embarrassing. The guys were just like, oh, enough. We just picked the women as the winner. I think it's probably more for effect than anything, because I really think the guys deserve to win, but, you know, the best book, because I thought their idea was banging. But the winners and losers were only separated by $14, which is even more why it makes me think that Regis, he probably should have picked the guys. The ladies lost by $14. 162 855 to 162 869 which means $325,000 for March of Dimes, a.k.a. D. Snyder's charity. All right, so the ladies are back in the boardroom, and Aubrey has raised the least amount of money. Oh, well. So she should be coming back to the boardroom, right? No. <laughs> Diana's too pretty, so I'll bring her back. And 
my other cronies on here are, are like, okay, so I'm not going to bring them back. But I'm going to bring back Debbie Gibson because I had to babysit her. I gave her a task a half an hour before it was supposed to be done, and she complained. So I'm going to bring her back. All right, so Teresa brings back Debbie and Diana, which was dumb because she definitely should have brought back Aubrey. But they're like this. <sighs> Teresa and Debbie are going at it like two cats in a bag, and Diana is just there like... <laughs> and Trump loved it. He effing loved it. So... Debbie's fired because this is just wrong. Trump don't like it. <laughs> and he's still hoping for a table flip from Teresa. All right, now after the boardroom, Aubrey and Dee are going at it hardcore in the suite, I guess you would call it. She called him shady eyes. That is so low. You, <laughs> it's like, hello, kettle, meet pot. So, D gets to deliver his check to March of Dimes, which is awesome, because if I had a premature baby, I would want D Schneider holding it. Absolutely. Hands down. Next task is at the Parks Department. They're meeting up with Walgreens, but you know what? They're going to switch up the teams first, because the ladies suck. They've lost five out of the seven challenges. So, on team... Let's see. <laughs> team Forte is... Penn, Diana, Lisa, D, and Lou. And on Team Unanimous is Arsenio, Clay, Paul, Aubrey, or Aubrey, as everybody's calling her, and Teresa. So the Walgreens challenge is create a live interactive health program for Walk with Walgreens. And the PMs, well, it's got to be Lou because he's Mr. Fitness, and Arsenio because he hasn't really done anything yet. All right, so Team Forte, Penn has to go to a show, but he does a lot of work before he does leave. And Lisa, a.k.a. Jabba the Hutt, she is so full of herself. It's killing me. It's absolutely killing me. Homer had to leave because there's not enough room for Lisa's ego and him in the same recap. Now Lou, which I didn't know, had double knee and hip replacement, so he basically had to walk again. He had to learn how to walk again like a little baby. And he wants to be the host, but it makes me a little bit nervous as well as everyone else because he's really not a good speaker. And it's partially because of his disability, which kind of sucks, but if you, you know, you've got other people who are on stage for a living, maybe you should have let them speak, but we'll see what happens. And Lisa, she's so jealous of Diana. It's killing her. It is absolutely killing her. So their theme is walk and do it all. They came up with all these things, you know, like, oh, I can walk and I could scratch my butt and I could, you know, um, talk to people and flirt with people. And they sent Lou and Diana out to buy a bathing suit for Diana to wear because Diana only has thongs, by the way just in case you were interested. And Lisa is trying to talk some smack to D, and D is not having it. He doesn't want to hear about how bad Diana is because she's not. Lisa's got such a vendetta against her. It's ridiculous. It's going to consume her. So on Team Unanimous, Aubrey actually thinks she's the project manager. And she is such a skanky bitch. They come up with a game show on stage theme and the box design was everybody's picture and, you know, what they think about walking. And she is digging hard into Arsenio. She is not relenting. She didn't use the picture he wanted. She tried to write his quote and he wasn't having it. It was, it was nasty. I mean, that was the beginning of nasty. So it's time for the presentations. And Allison Sweeney from Biggest Loser is the guest host or guest judge. Um, Lou was actually really great during his presentation. Um, I know, Homer's so excited. He came back for Lou, but he hates Lisa. <laughs> See, I just mentioned her name and he's sticking his butt right in the camera. Anyway, um, Penn had a little faux pas. He said it was walk with Walmart, but you know what? 
to his credit, he had an hour of sleep. and But he did do a really great presentation after Lou got up there and did his, too. Now, the other team, their uh, theme was face reality because they're all reality stars, and they had their faces on the kit. They had lots of facts in their game show, but it didn't really explain the program too well, which kind of sucked because isn't that what the presentation is all about? All right, so it's time for the boardroom, and we find out that Aubrey is a selfish, crying, skanky bitch. <laughs> I already knew that. I mean, come on, this is like week seven, right? Or eight, actually. And Arsenio is going F nuts on her. The best part of the episode was after we find out that Arsenio's team wins, Aubrey takes off because she's her feelings are really hurt. All she does is really cry. And I think the reason that she's really crying is because she's oh. overweight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Homer agrees. He can't stand that. <sighs> anyway, our, the best part of the episode was when Arsenia was like, when I wanted to see who else was on the show with me, and I googled your name, Teresa, and I saw that, you know, you had cookbooks and stuff, and then I googled Aubrey, and all I saw was a naked picture with her gut. <laughs> Hello! That's the whole season in a capsule. Alright, so <laughs> Lisa's team lost, and she absolutely hates Lou and Diana. And she would bring Diana back to the boardroom. Why? Just because she hates her. But she didn't say that. She was like, oh, because I hate her. <laughs> so Lou gets that bug put in his ear, even though he can't hear it. I can't believe I just said that. You know what I mean. Um, so Lou brings back Diana and Dee, and <laughs> Dee is fired for the boring box design. Let's just cut to the chase. This episode's been long enough already. I'm not going to torture you any further. <sighs> Poor Dee. I really liked him. But next time on The Celebrity Apprentice, it's going to be crazy, because Jabba the Hutt, a.k.a. Lisa Lampanelli, she has a mental breakdown, and she starts attacking everyone. Like she hasn't been already. <laughs> I feel sorry for her husband. Anyway, till next time, much love.